Hi, Pottery Peeps. So a lot of you um, commented on the kiln opening video when I showed this and you wanted to see how I do this. So I'm going to show you. I've got, I've been crazy making plates and I've actually even had my kitty sleeping in my plate. So I might have to actually just double check that I don't have any cat hair on them. So I've got a bunch of these that I didn't do anything to them in the greenware stage. And I have a bunch of these um, Tree of Life. I bought like a set of 12 on Amazon and they came in all different different type shapes. And I'm using, I cut this one to fit the plate better. This one is more bowl shaped. And so the squares were sticking up too much for me. So I just cut it. And then I'm gonna do that one. So I'm gonna show you how to do both of these. Um, this one just didn't fit the plate. It fit this really great, but I did it on another plate and, I, and it just looked too small. So I'm going to go ahead and do one of these. So what you need for this, you need stencil, stencil brushes, paper towels. And I like my underglaze. This is Speedball Pine. Um, I like my underglaze a little thick for this because you're almost doing a dry brushing type of thing. So I'm going to lower you down and show you how I do this. Okay, so I'm just going to take my brush. I'm not really going to load it up too much because I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to pounce it off. If you've ever stenciled on a wall, it's exactly the same. You don't want your underglaze too runny for this. I've already taped my stencil down and I'm going to even hold it down. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, just so this doesn't make too much noise, me pouncing on my countertop. So I'm going to hold it down with my fingers around where I'm going to pounce. And you're just going to want to lightly go in there and then just keep going back over it until you like the effect. This one I'm just going to do one solid color. And then on the next one, I'm going to do a variegated color. And then once your brush starts getting a little dry and you're not noticing, it's amazing how much paint it'll take. Just dab it back in there. Make sure you get the excess off because you don't want it to bleed underneath the stencil. That's why we're doing it this way. Just make sure you're watching your brush because the bristles will fan out, so watch around your edges so you don't get too much. You don't want to have to clean it up. And you just keep doing this until you're done, until you're happy with it. It'll probably speed you up for most of it. Take a couple of pieces of bisware that you're not invested in and try out um, this method if you've never stenciled before. I've stenciled on walls before. In fact, I did my garage where the kiln rooms are. I painted the floor and stenciled the floor. So I've got many, many years of stenciling. And it's the same, whether it's a wall or whether it's the um, um, working on ceramic or bisquare. It's really just the same. Okay, <clears throat> that looks pretty good. So what I might do is um, let it dry, just kind of look over it again and see if there's any spots that I missed that I can just fill in. And by doing it dry like this and with the thicker underglaze, it helps it to keep it from bleeding underneath the stencil.
Okay. Then you just take it off. And you've got your stencil. This works really, really well on flat pieces. It does not work so well on curved pieces. Curved pieces, you might want to cut a stencil out in um, like newspaper and get it wet. Whoops. So right here, I had some paint on my fingers. So I will have to get that off. And this one I plan to just do a clear um, glaze over it. So just make sure. I think I'm going to go ahead and paint this in with the, um, the same green though. I think that'll be a nice balance. I don't know. I'll have to decide. <laughs> we'll have to see. But I think that that is actually really, really pretty. It's kind of nice and classic. So, all right, we'll have to see. <laughs> You'll have to come back and see what I did in the glaze, um, what I decided, because right now I'm undecided. But this one, this one's got some more curves, and of course I've got a smaller base on it. But because it is a bowl, it just kind of lended itself to this type of a treatment versus the plate. I thought the plate was more masculine. We'll have to see. Who knows? I don't think it really matters. I'm just having fun playing with all these different stencils. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get this one taped down. All right, so this one is definitely raised up. So you could go in... Um, and tape off um, parts of this but for what I'm going to do I'm not going to do that so one thing that I really like about um, the velvet underglaze they always get really thick on the lids I'm actually going to be blending my colors and I am blending also my underglazes I've got Speedball and Amico here. I am, um, if you haven't noticed by now, blue, purple, and green are my favorite colors. But it could be, I don't know if I'll use this, but we might. So this is um, Carmine Speedball. And you can order, you want a, no, no, I don't want a new brush. Start with one of these. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend it as I'm doing it. Okay. So I know I want to end with the green. So it's just a matter of what colors I'm going to start with. I might not use the red at all. So let's start with the purple. Whoops. Try to keep your hands clean. <laughs> I am, like I've said before, I'm very messy when I do stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some purple. Since I've got a white background, I'm gonna go pretty intense on my colors. And since this is raised, I am going to try to hold this down so that um, it doesn't bleed on me. And if it does bleed on you, let it dry, take a needle tool, and you can try and scrape it off. Don't, don't try to do water. And the whole key to this is to keep your brush fairly dry. And I just noticed that I'm going to have issues because I already got some purple outside my lines. So these one sides that um, double up your tape on the sides that you know you're too, are too close to the edge. And if you can't, 
a lot of times under glaze, especially the darker colors, are going to stain the bisque. So even with water, it tends to stain. I've found that if you take a needle tool, scrape off as much as you can, then take some sandpaper and sand it off. That's my tip for that. Okay, so I'm gonna go on this side. Make sure I keep my hands clean. That's actually one of my biggest problems is I get my hands dirty and don't know what I'm touching. I'm just gonna go around this, just the, the canopy of the tree. And then I'm gonna start blending my colors. And this is how I did that other one on the buttercrock. So I started with one color and I blend it down. Let's see. It's about even, I guess. Okay, so now I'm doing so I'm not going to change my brush. I'm gonna grab some of this blue. And then I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna go up into that purple and then down. So kind of blending it in with the purple, which makes its own color because it's blending with the blue. So you actually get a third color. So with these three colors, I'm going to actually have six because I'm blending it on the plate. any spots. It's okay too if you're if you do miss a couple of spots and it's a little darker in one area and lighter in another that's actually a really pretty look too. Okay so now I'm just gonna go straight blue and not blend. Alright so I guess I'll have actually I'll blend in the green into the trunk because I want those pretty colors on my tree. This is a fanciful tree. You could do this with um, shades of green and it'd be beautiful. Shades of red for fall, shades of yellow. But for this one, this is what I'm doing. I want to make sure I get that little swirly gig before I move. So even though I've got a brush here that's with green. I'm just going to add. I want to blend it with the green. And blend it with the blue. So I'll take this up into the branches a little bit. Get kind of a dark blue green. So it'll be interesting to see how these fire. But yeah, take it up into the branches. This would be pretty if you did it with them um, instead of green if you did it with a brown would be pretty too so all right let's see what that looks like so not too bad for it being kind of uh more of a rounded, I think that's going to be pretty. I actually might come in though with a brush and define the bottom of the trunk. Maybe I'll put in, I could do a line. Oh, maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see. But actually, I don't like, and I'm never good with a fine brush, that's why I kind of like this stencil. So, whoops, yep, okay. Just gonna make sure I got that bottom. I want more of a crisper line. Okay, there we go. Okay, lights a little bit better on this now. We're having a blizzard today. Looks nasty out there. This is gonna look amazing in my kitchen. 
So I think I will just paint the braid in and probably wipe it back. I'll do that off camera. You guys know how to do that. So, But check back. Um, today is Friday, March something, and I will be unloading Sunday because I plan to fire tonight. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope, um, hope you're having good weather where you're at. It doesn't look like anybody in the country is, so stay inside, stay warm, stay safe.